Lewi. Lewi has so many industries, so many small industries. Which of them? Which of them? Not one of them is listed on the Nigerian Stock Exchange. And you come here and, and cloud that as an achievement. Come on, some of us are not are not jokers here. I've heard even up to well-meaning Nigerian when he was talking, he made a submission about the ports. He said which of the ports in Nigeria is working in his own words um, that, that is not doing oil. Please, that's the problem. When some of you come out here and argue, you argue from your point of myopia. On a port, Portacot port, in fact, even Calabar port just received the world's largest ship two weeks ago. It was in the news. And then when that ship was leaving, that ship was leaving with cocoa. So if the world's largest ship can birth in Calabar, and they said 70 ships have birthed. If the world's largest ship can birth in Calabar, was it carrying oil? When it was leaving, was cocoa oil? It's just, you people don't understand what is happening around you. You don't understand the things that are going on in your environment. You dwell in negativity. You pride yourself in seeing only the bad that is happening around the country. And you do not want to see the good things so that you can go into your echo chambers. And it's funny. It's funny. I listened to Real Ever Best. He could not, he was speaking for 20 minutes and he could not even say anything. This is because they are not in friendly territory. You are not in a place where you can sit down and abuse everybody and call everybody names so you don't feel comfortable. Until you abuse everybody, that's when you are making sense. The brother that just spoke now, the brother that just spoke now was talking about um, Tinubu did not do, um, Tinubu is not speaking. Even if Tinubu speaks to you today, you would refuse to listen. You would not want to listen. When Tinubu was going to his electorate, when Tinubu was moving from Gombe to, to, to Jigawa just three weeks ago, your own principal was moving from Harvard to Oxford to the United States to people who will not vote, to people who don't have PVC to people who will not influence your election. People that are smart politicians know where their votes will come from. At the same, in one breath, you say Tinubu holds a grip on Lagos. Oh, Tinubu is the godfather. Oh, he's insisting that. In another breath, you say the achievements of the people before him or the people after him should not be given to him. What do you want? You that wasn't me, bro. I never hold, said... The hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You say you want a democracy. You say you want a democracy. And the people of Lagos have consistently, consistently voted for another party. And you are angry that the people are voting for another party. You want to bring in your own party. How many people in Lagos will prefer going to Anambra? Why didn't all of you migrate to Anambra since Pitobi did so much marvelous things in Anambra? And you want to talk about data? What our data shows is that Nigeria has a revenue problem. So what we need is a president or leaders at all strata, from local government, state government. We need people that can think outside the box to bring in more revenue to our country. Peter Obi, in eight years, did an average of 8 billion naira as internally generated revenue in Anambra. William Obiano that came after him did 22. Pito, um, Ngige that was before him did 7.9 or 7.5 meaning Peter B did only increased Anambra IGR by 1.5 billion in 8 years is that somebody that thinks outside the box El Rufai today is being celebrated you can see it, it was on Channel TV he's being celebrated Kaduna is landlocked Kaduna does not have a port go and see Kaduna Somebody was thinking outside the box and decided that he was going to bring in a dry port. A dry port to Kaduna that is landlocked. Those are governors that are thinking outside the box. When we are here, we were seeing when everybody was running to Calabar during Calabar Carnival. Donald Duke was thinking outside the box. You are talking about education. Some of you came out and one of the things that you always reel out was Peter B's achievement in education. And they said, what exactly was it? Did he build schools? Oh, we found out that, oh, he moved schools to missionary schools. Is that an achievement? Everybody did it. Arek Beshola did it. Tinubu did it years before. Somebody came out and talked about data. Well, let me make you, let me make you understand. In 1999, Tinubu became governor of Lagos State. The first thing he did for the Lagos State Civil Service was to bring in the Oracle database software. Oracle database software in 1999. 
you were talking about it being improved. It is still being improved because as at that time, I think it was still Oracle 9.0 and now we are on Oracle 15 or Oracle 16. He used that software to weed out ghost workers. Now tell me, why is Anambra still having the problem with ghost workers? When Tinubu was building Lasema, when he was building the Lagos State Pension Fund, which is the most robust in Nigeria, he was the first governor to sign that into law. Lagos State Pensions. And, form, and which was the fulcrum of what the federal government now used to form the national, uh, to form PENCOM. And that's why our parents, who are civil servants, do not joke with Tinubu. They don't, Tinubu doesn't need to be talking. It's the people that he has affected that will talk for him. But to today that we speak, Anambra is still having pension problem. Those are people that are thinking outside the box. Now, if I ask you, what are the things that Peter Obi did that was thinking outside the box? You people will start abusing me. These are people that we are thinking. 1999, that's when, they were, that's when he was using Oracle, so Oracle database. 1999. 20 years ago. Can you say the same thing about Peter Obi? And you're talking about technology. And you're talking about who is, who is more this one. Who is, he doesn't need to talk. People will talk for him. Your achievements will show for yourself. Not people that will come in and come and be giving us come and be giving us rhetoric, rhetoric, rhetoric every time and not action. We don't like people that talk too much. We like people that have action. You say the same thing about Peter Obi and you're talking about technology. And you're talking about who is who is more this one. Who is, he doesn't need to talk. People will talk for him. Your achievements will show for yourself. Not people that will come in and come and be giving us come and be giving us rhetoric, rhetoric, rhetoric every time and not action. We don't like people that talk too much. We like people that have action. One of Wari's problem is that he doesn't talk. Action. It's not by coming to come and tell people, I'm going to build Second Niger Bridge. I'm going to build Second Niger Bridge. Shagari will tell you. Obasanjo will tell you. Yadua will tell you. Jonathan will tell you. Wari did not tell you. He did it. Action. Action. You are saying, oh, how, how is he going to do? How is he going to? That's to tell you how politically, na politically naive some of you are. Tell him how is he going to how is he going to cut the budget? Is it the job of the president to cut the budget? That's why they say you should go and focus on national assembly, but you don't want to focus on the people that you vote into national assembly. You think it's the president that will just come on and beat all the governors and beat all the national assembly people, carry bulala and start flogging them? Hey, come you, you are padding budget, I'll flog you. Is that how it works? No. You need to understand how politics works. That's why you need people in the federal house of assembly, state houses of assembly, national assembly. That's what you need. It's not one president that we do it. But you people don't even understand how it works. And you want you want Tinubu to come and tell you how he's going to do it. If I ask you, you are talking about fighting corruption. The biggest fraud cases in Nigeria, there's Dani Alice in Madeke. The biggest fraud cases in Nigeria, there's Dani Alice in Madeke, Dasuki. All their monies passed through a bank that was managed by, that was managed, that it co-owned. Or chaired by, by, by Peter Obi. Is it possible that the chairman of a bank or somebody that has controlling interest in a bank will not benefit from the money that passed, the $2 billion that Dasuki stole? He passed through Fidelity Bank. What is the highest fraud in that? Is that not part of the fraud? Is that not the problem that we are talking about in the country? That you take all the money that belongs to your state government, you go and save it in a bank that you have controlling shares in. And you are coming out to come and give us morality police. Come on, you guys. Come on. Let's talk real issues and not be a pallet talk. Thank you.